Hi, I'm John Hood. I'm the author of a series of historical fantasy novels called The Folklore Cycle. The first book of the series, Mountain Folk, was published in 2021. The second book in the series is called Forest Folk, and it's about to come out here in April. This is the eighth in a series of videos we've prepared to give you an advanced look at the fantastic world of forest folk. I describe this new book and its predecessor, Mountain Folk, as a blending of historical fiction, epic fantasy, and American folklore. Today's topic is very much in the latter category, prominent Americans who really existed, but whose true lives are buried beneath many layers of legend, folklore, and swagger. Speaking of which, consider the life of Davy Crockett. It was filled with plenty of adventure and controversy, but Crockett, who preferred to actually be called David, not Davy, also freely embellished his exploits for fun, profit, and political gain. During his time in Congress, for example, Crockett often liked to present a sort of caricature of himself to Eastern society. Even more incredibly, however, his wasn't the only exaggerated version of Davy Crockett that was produced during his lifetime. In 1831, a play debuted in New York City called Lion of the West. Its protagonist was Nimrod Wildfire, a thinly veiled parody of the frontier congressman. When the touring company brought the play to Washington that December, Crockett was there on opening night. Actor and subject took turns bowing to each other, which of course delighted the audience. Crockett wasn't the only real life frontiersman to become a folk hero. Daniel Boone, a central character in my first novel, Mountain Folk, preceded Crockett by a generation and became the subject of story and song himself. Fess Parker, who played Davy Crockett in the popular Disney films, also portrayed Daniel Boone on a long-running TV series. And then there was Mike Fink, a riverboat man and sometime Crockett antagonist who boasted that he could outrun, outhop, outjump, throw down, drag out, and lick any man in the country. Both Fink and Crockett managed to brag and cajole their way into forest folk. I couldn't resist them. Not all folk heroes were known for wrestling alligators or shooting a fly off a pig's nose at 90 paces. I'm speaking to you from the Mercier Orchard, which is in Blue Ridge, Georgia. It's a fourth generation farm that produces apples, cider, apple wine, and lots of other things. And it's also an excellent backdrop for talking about Johnny Appleseed. John Chapman was born in 1774 in Massachusetts, but spent most of his life on what was then the new frontier territories of what are now Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. His eccentricities became a big part of his legend, such as wearing a coffee sack as a shirt and a cook pot as a hat. Although history knows him primarily as a planter of apple trees on the frontier, Chapman's greater interest was in the fruits of the spirit. A passionate proponent of peace and an opponent of slavery, he likely thought of himself as a Christian missionary first and a horticulturalist second. As for all those trees that Johnny Appleseed planted, it's important to understand that they weren't really meant to produce fruit for eating or baking into pies. They produced apples for making cider, including hard cider, which could be stored for later use and served as an excellent substitute for often dirty water. In Forest Folk, my version of Johnny Appleseed plays a somewhat mysterious role in the story. I won't spoil it for you other than to say that I do depict a real life incident, the marathon run he made from Mansfield to Mount Vernon, Ohio in 1813 to warn local residents about a possible Indian raid. In future videos, I'll show you even more of the world of forest folk. You can always learn more for yourself in two different ways. One of them will be to visit the Folklore Cycle channel on YouTube. That's where all our videos are stored. The second way is to visit the book's website, which you can find at forestfolkbook.com. While there, you can learn how to order the book as a paperback, as a digital download, or as an audiobook. See you soon.